So this week's lab, um, we are going to geocode and visualize um, some data in ArcGIS Pro. So for this lab, I choose the Gun Violence Archive, so where you can find out the URL from the, um, the lab instruction. And I choose this data set. Uh, the main reason is that uh, the data set contains perfect the data format that can that is suitable for uh, geocoding. So I made a mistake in the previous lab that I said uh, the LIDAR points are not geocoded. Uh, actually, that was a mistake. So um, it should be called not georeferenced. Uh, geocoding has a different meaning. So geocoding, it means that uh, geocode can help us identify the position, spatial positions based on the address or based on the place names. So that is geocode, uh, so not georeference. Georeference means that can we identify those uh, spatial locations based on coordinates. Uh, so the LIDAR points are not georeferenced. And geocoding means that we are going to identify those spa uh, spatial locations based on the address or based on their place names. OK, so here we are going to download the math routine records in 2019. Um, so we go to the website and go to the reports and then click uh, math routine 2019. And here you can see they have a date, uh, they have a state, um, city or country, and also address information. So that is a great example that for geocode. And unfortunately, we have a number of people being killed and also injured. Uh, so let's export the data as a CSV file. So let's click export as CSV. And next, let's download the data. So by default, it will be downloaded to our local computer. So let's first open that one. Okay, uh, so we can open that one by using, uh, by using Excel. And if you are using Mac computer, um, I believe there are also other tools that you can open that Excel CSV file because CSV file is a free um, data format. And next, we are going to do some data cleaning part. So every time when we uh, download data from other resources, so uh, the best practice is that we have to look at the, the raw data and also do some data cleaning. Uh, so here we are going to delete this columns, the operation columns, because that on the website that will direct you to additional web pages, but here it is not helpful. So let's just remove this one, delete. And for the instant date, so Excel can recognize they are in a date format, um, but we do have the letters, December, and also date and also year. Um, unfortunately, ArcGIS Pro and cannot recognize this date format. So let's convert this one into a slightly different date format. Uh, so let's select this row and also go to the data. <clears throat> and actually we can just change that one in the home folder, sorry. So let's go back to home. And here you can see instead of using general, so let's go to the short date. Okay, so now you can see now we convert that one into a slightly different format, uh, which ArcGIS Pro is able to recognize. Okay, so that is talking about date. And next, uh, we don't want special characters uh, in the, especially for the columns names. So let's change on those two as well. So we remove those hashtags. Okay, so now we have a clean data set. So let's save this clean data set. So let's save as. Again, I'm going to save that one to my OneDrive folder. OK, uh, so I'm going to save to uh, here. I'm going to save that one to lab 6. And I'll, I'll call it uh, mass shooting clean so that I know that uh, this is a clean uh, data. So for, if for some reason that you cannot clean the data by using your own local computer, so I will also provide 
uh, this CSV file on Canvas so that you can download the data uh, from Canvas directly. And save that one to, you can either upload to AppStream or save that one to your OneDrive folder and up, that will be uploaded to AppStream as well. Okay, so that is a data part. Uh, next, since in my case, it is already saved to OneDrive folder, so I just go ahead, go to my AppStream. Okay, and I will check if the data has been uploaded. So I go to my AppStream uh, OneDrive. And for this class, and you can see Lab 6 folder is created. And if I, uh, it's not there yet. Okay, so I just waited for probably just one minute and uh, now the math routine has been uh, uploaded. So I guess I have a slow internet tonight, uh, today. So um, just waited for just one minute and now it is uploaded. So that's great. Okay, next I'm going to create a new project for this lab. So uh, I will also start with a map template and I will call it lab six and i'm not going to create a new folder for this project but instead i will choose the lab six folder that i created uh, in AppStream. so d uh, photon user and my files one drive files so when we use arcgis pro and also arcgis i guess the hardest part is always um, find out the data and also make connection to your project. Okay, so lab six and also the location will be in my OneDrive lab six. And next I click OK. Okay, uh, so once uh, the project is created, so let's go to the folders and lab six. And you can see here uh, the master team says we found now is uh, can be recognized because CSV file is the one type of file that can be recognized. Uh, so let's drag this one to our map, or not, not to our map, to our table of contents. And let's open the attribute because it is a non spatial data set. And we can see that the data has been recognized and also imported successfully. So we have the incident date, we have the state, city address and also people being killed and also injured in each um, instant. Okay, uh, so we are going to do a geocode, geocoding. So geocoding again will convert those addresses into spatial points, spatial locations so that we can run some spatial analysis. Um, so to do that, let's right click this table and here you can see we can geocode the table. So if you already have the coordination, you can just display the x, y data. But in our case, we, we just have the address, so we are going to do the geocode. So let's geocode table. And so you can see there will be several steps. So let's just start. And first, let's say we want to use this math routine clean says we fail as our input table. And you have asked, so do you have more than one field or just one field? So in our case, we have more than one field because we have state, city or county, and also address three fields. So let's choose more than one field. And next. So next, um, they are asking, what is your locator? So if you click this drop down list, you can see we have two, ArcGIS Word Geoprocessing and also the second one. Um, BGIN geocoder. So the second one is a free, the first one is not. So uh, keep in mind that if we want to use ArcGIS Word geocoding service, um, that one has um, very high accuracy and also it is not free. So it is about, um, I'm not sure, probably if I remember correctly, uh, 40 credits per thousand records, okay? Uh, so we'll use our GMU um, credits so that 
uh, you will not get bill, but keep in mind that when you are using geocoding, geocode functions, um, do not use that one just you know to, to geocode some random stuff. So because the geocoding is pretty expensive, it's a pretty expensive function. So let's select that one. And you can see that this icon indicate that this one uh, will uh, cost our credits. Okay. So next, so next we are going to match the records with each other. So we can say, okay, the address, we have address field, that's great. We don't have the neighborhood, the city, I would choose city or county. For the county, well, I will also choose city or county. And state, you can see they match each other, a grid. And, and also we don't have zip code, and we have address. Uh, we also do not have a country field. So that's so so that's it. And let's click next. Uh, next, so what is our out output? So we will choose this one. Uh, so math clean geocoded, so that's fine. And we also want to add that one to our map. And we can and keep everything as default. Actually, for the second one, the preferred location type, uh, let's just choose address locations because we don't need routing. Okay, and let's go to next. Okay, here, uh, so they're asking, so which country are those points located? So uh, we can just choose United States. And next. And so what type of those uh, records? So. I would just simply select address, okay? And let's, let's click finish. So uh, again, so it will ask you to review what you're going to do, okay? And also just, uh, we also have a warning that this will, if this is not free, okay? Um, okay, so everything looks pretty good and let's run it. Okay, and now you can see it is running. So let's just be patient. Uh, so we have about 400 records. So um, that should not be a big deal. Uh, so if you have, let's say, uh, thousands or millions of records you want geocode, uh, please do not do that. So if you want geocode, let's say, millions, of um, tens of thousand records, so you will use all the GME credits. Okay, so now we have this uh, result that 400 has records have been matched, uh, so that's perfect, that's great. Um, uh, so to be honest, when um, I'm, I have been using many different types of the geocoding services, and I feel like ArcGIS Pro has the highest accuracy. We also have two unmatched, so that's fine. They're just less than 1%. And also we have 16 tied. Okay, so that is because um, ArcGIS Pro is not sure where. So they identified multiple positions for one address, but they, they are not sure that which one will be, should be the best. So let's see, they asked, do you want to start the rematch process? Let's say yes. Okay, uh, so here they will give you some unmatched records and see if you are um, okay with these unmatched records. And if you see yes, you can just uh, click this check button. And also for the next unmatched records, so they have two. Okay, and you can you can manually check which one you think is uh, is the best one. So suppose that I know those locations, so I just check the second one and I click yes. Uh, so now you can view those all the matched records. So one by one, if you like. And also most importantly, you can check those tied records. So we have 16 tied records. So for each single record, for this one, you can see on the same address, uh, they have A, B, C, D, um, E actually are uh, five positions. Uh, so if you know which position exactly it is, uh, you can just uh, select that one. 
and you can move on see to check okay so here we have our match records which one do you think is the best one okay so suppose that you have uh, manually let's say auto apply okay so suppose that you have manually um, double check all the title all the uh, unmatched records and you are happy with the result so uh, we can go to the data and actually we uh, sorry we can go to the editor and we can see we want to save our result save our results so let's say click save okay yes okay so now we have done the uh, geocoding so we can close um, these tables and if we now we go to our uh, geodatabase uh, file geodatabase we can see we have a feature class that is points and uh, if we zoom out so zoom to the layers so now we can see all those instances that are geocoded on the map Okay, uh, so we can also open this uh, attribute table and we will see that this attribute table have, has a lot of um, columns and most of the columns that actually are not necessary that is because that we need to match uh, the result of the geocoding. So you can of course delete those fields so if we go to the data, so here we go to the data, and also if we click the fields, okay, and so you can manually delete those fields, or you can just make sure that you can just uncheck those fields that you don't want to um, be visible, okay. Um, however, another way that we can clean um, this table, so we want to make this table to be shorter, is that we can export the table. So let's see export the data again, export the feature. Okay, and the output feature, so let's call it mass shooting simple. So we want simplified. And we can just unflag those fields. So, so if we clear the first field, and we go to very bottom, so, so just above the instant, so we use a shift key. So we select all those fields and we click this remove. Okay, so we just want to keep the original fields that we have in a CSV file. So we want the instant date, state, city or county address, uh, people being killed and other people being injured. So let's just keep those uh, fields. Okay, so by export the data into a, another feature class, so we can uh, easily filter out the other fields or the other columns that we don't want to use. Okay, and um, let's just run it. Okay, so now it is success. Uh, so it, now if we go to our catalog, uh, see we have two feature class. So the second one, is one that we just exported and actually it's already on the map. Uh, so if we open the attribute table, uh, so here we can see it has uh, fewer columns. Okay, we, we still have the object ID, which is required. And also we have the geometry that is shape, that those are the points. All right, so let's just, now we can remove all the other attribute, uh, layers, like we, let's remove the geocoded one, and also let's remove the original CSV file. Okay, and let's also keep this attribute table open. So uh, we can drag this one a little bit down. All right. <coughs> Uh, so next, let's try to do some selections. Uh, so if we go to the map, and here we can see in this selection, 
a region so we can manually select those attributes. So if we just click that, uh, we can manually select those points and also on the attribute table. So those points, their corresponding attributes are also highlighted. And we can also switch to those selected features. Okay, so that's, that's very convenient. And we can clear this selection. Okay, so that is select manually, and we can go back to show all the records. Uh, of course, you can, um, there are more options that you can select the points manually. Uh, next, we can also select by attributes, or we can use um, some SQL code if you, uh, if you know that how to do that. So here, the input rows, let's choose the math routine. That is the feature class. And here you can choose, do you want to create a new selection or do you want to add to other selections? So here we don't have any selection yet. So let's just create a new selection. And let's add a new expression. And this is where you can run some SQL code. So if you know SQL code, if you're very familiar with SQL code, you can just check that one. And here you can just type your SQL code. For example, select, uh, select a state from the tables, etc. Um, and also you can define the where clause, etc. So here I'm not going to run the SQL SQL code. But instead, uh, I'm going to use the default view. So the uh, where you can just use this drop-down list and to add different where clause. So for example, I want to see where the state is equal or to Virginia. So let's see that do we have any instance in Virginia? Okay. So that is a where clause. And um, I think this is very intuitive. And uh, you can also check, make sure that this expression valid and that is valid. Okay, great. And now let's run it. Okay, and now you can see this is complete and uh, we have 10 records being selected. So that means that there were 10 mass routine events instance in Virginia last year. So if we switch to the selected records, we can see they are all in Virginia and some are in Richmond, two in Richmond, and also we can also um, descending all the author or earth sending the table. Okay, so we have two in Richmond. And you can see on the map, they are also highlighted. So we can see where are those instances. So they are all in Virginia. Okay, uh, so that is select by attributes. So let's clear that one. Uh, we can also select by location. So to select by location, uh, we need to have um, a reference layer. Okay, so let's go to tech catalog and let's go to portal. So let's download some ship files that can serve as a reference layer. So if we go to living atlas, so nowadays that it's very easy to download those reference layers. So living atlas, and we go to the boundaries, admin, administrative, and let's search the USA state. Sorry, a typo. Uh, so normally I would choose the first one. You can see the USC state. So that contains all the, the boundaries of all the states. So if you are looking at the county level, you can select the second one. So let's just select the first one and drag to our map. I would say now that it's very convenient to identify, to find out those, those boundaries in ArcGIS Pro because they have such amazing living atlas. Okay. So now let's select by location. Uh, so here we can see what you need to specify the input feature and also the selecting feature. Uh, so input feature normally will be your target. 
and say we want select from the mass shootings. And selecting feature will be normally is the reference. So here we want to be the states. And here you can specify the relationships. Um, I think those relationships are very intuitive. Um, of course, you can always check their help and get more information about those relationships. Uh, so the intersect is one that I used a lot. So I just like intersect. Again, I want to use a new selection. And before I run that, I can select the Virginia state, which is here. Okay, so once I select Virginia state, so the selected state will be the selected feature. So by default, it will be the selected state will be the selected feature. Okay, from these selecting features. Uh, next, let's run it. Okay, so intersect means that all the points that intersect or, we, or, or share or within the boundary of the Virginia will be selected. And again, so we have the same result. So if we go to the mass routines, we can see that 10 of those mass routines uh, ha have been selected and they are all in Virginia, okay? So they are all in Virginia. Okay, so um, that is uh, another way that we can select by location, okay? So if you don't select any state here and you just run the intersect, so all the points that uh, will be highlighted, will be selected, because all the points are intersecting with all the states. Okay, so that is try some selections. Uh, so before we move on, so let's make sure that we clear all the selections. So we click this one, so we clear all the selections. Um, we can also remove this one, uh, the states. Okay. Uh, next, we are going to try to create some visualizations. So we want to explore the data. So, so now we have each single point that in different states. And also we see the people, number of people being killed or injured in, in, uh, uh, in each instant. So we can do some very simple non-spatial visualizations that we can explore the data. So now if we right click the layer, and create a chart. Uh, so here we can see ArcGIS Pro now provides some very excellent visualizations for us. Okay, so we can create bar chart, line chart, a scatter plot, a histogram, a box plot. Okay, so those are the most common used, commonly used visualizations. And also we can create the other visualizations. Uh, so let's first try to create a bar chart. So we select bar chart, and they're asking, okay, so which will be your categorical data? So let's choose state. So because we want to compare, um, and by default, they are showing the count, so number of records in each state. Uh, we can see the most one is California. Uh, the second highest is uh, Texas, uh, sorry, uh, Illinois, and also the third one is uh, Texas. Um, so, however, here we want to see the number of people being killed and also injured. And we want to see the total. So we choose sum and we hit apply. Okay, uh, so now we have a bar chart that shows that uh, number of people being killed and also injured in each single state. Uh, so you can see that we also have the legend that killed and not injured. Okay. Um, one nice thing that, that I really like is that uh, you can, of course, rotate, etc. So if you enable this extend, and now if we zoom in with, uh, on the map, so you can use uh, uh, the navigator, online navigator, Okay, so if you switch to the view and also go use online navigator. 
if you zoom in, just in case your, your mouse does not support, do not have them, okay? And you can see that depending on where you zoomed in, and the chart also updated, okay? So the chart also updates. So if you zoom to Virginia, okay? You can see that um, uh, all states that in count extend um, will be displayed. Okay, and also if you click those bars and you can see that corresponding points will be highlighted. So this, this is a um, very interactive visualization. Okay, so that allow you to explore so for specific areas that, uh, that you're interested in, and you can see the bar chart uh, accordingly. Okay, uh, so now let's clear the selection. Uh, you can also enable the selection. So that means that every time when you make a selection on the map and the corresponding areas, um, the data will also upload, will update it to show the corresponding area. So for example, now if I uh, select the California, okay, and you can see that uh, the, the bar chart is updated to show the California only. And similarly, if I select Virginia, and you can see that now I can see Virginia and also Maryland, etc. So that is a very great um, visualization. I, I really like this one. That Access Pro really made a great uh, improvement that compared to ArcMap. Uh, if you want to export the map, you can see the chart. You can see here we have an export. So we can always export the data. So for example, we can export this one to our Lab 6 folder. Uh, you can choose <coughs> the name. So for example, this will be the bar chart. So we can export to our lab folder, which will also be saved to OneDrive. So let's say export. And now if we go to our folder, OneDrive, so we all see the exported uh, um, image that should be here. Okay, now you can see it has been exported. So I choose the wrong uh, extension, so SVG. Uh, so let me do it again. So let's choose JPEG. Okay, so bar chart uh, dot JPG. Okay, let's choose that one. And now let's see the OneDrive folder file. Because SVG, uh, for most computers, you may not be able to open that one. So, okay, JPEG is perfect. Uh, so you, you can now open that one to your local OneDrive folder, or you can um, download this one, okay, and to your local computer. And also, other uh, visualizations, charts that are created is also saved here. So Every time you can just reopen it um, if you want. Okay, uh, so let's move on. So let's say we want to explore the other um, uh, visualization. So let's say we want to create a line chart. So line chart is great to show the trend. Uh, so here we want to show the number of people being um, killed or injured. However, we want to use the date that uh, is the instant date. Uh, let's click the killed and also injured. And let's see, we'll see the total. And apply. Uh, so now you can see that on each single day that total number of people being injured or killed. And also you can also enable this extend so that if you zoom into different places, and you can see the trend. Now you can also enable the selection, okay? So if you want to see the Virginia, or the area that's around, uh, uh, around Virginia, so you can also do that. Okay, uh, so that is a line chart. Uh, let's check the others. Uh, so scatter plot is great to show the relationship. So for example, 
um, if I want to see the relationship between injured and also killed, so I can also do that. Okay, and here you can see they also give you a regression models where uh, you can see normally that if you have more injured, and you will have more people being killed. Um, but R square is very very low, so uh, it. Okay, uh, so that it shows a, a relationship by using the scat plot. Uh, you can of course customize your visualization like uh, change format, etc. Okay. Uh, similar to scat plot, you can also create uh, visualizations for the scat plot matrix. So that means you can have compare the the relationship among multiple variables, so more than two variables. So that each scat plot will be one will be in one cell in that scat plot matrix. Uh, the QQ plot is uh, is another one that can allow you to, to see that if the distribution of your data is similar to a normal distribution or to any other type of the distribution. So here we want to see that the number of people being killed is that does that similar to a normal distribution, or does the distribution of the number of people being killed? It is similar to the distribution of number of people being injured. Okay, so that is what we can do with the QQ plot. Um, histogram is great to show the distribution of a single variable. Okay, so for example, if you want to see the number of people being injured, okay. Um, as we saw earlier, so that is not a normal distribution by looking at the QQ plot. And now if you look at the in, uh, histogram, so uh, it is not normally a normal distribution because we do have a long tail here. Okay, uh, you can also add the other information like standard deviations, uh, medians, and also mean values, etc. Okay, uh, so that is the histogram. Uh, box plot. So box plot can be used to compare the statistical distribution of different variables. So let's say if you want to see the distribution of injured uh, across all the states, okay, across all the state, and we can see that the mean value. So that we can see that Texas has uh, the biggest maximum values of the injured. Um, and also we can see the median values, we can see which state has the highest median values, um, which state has the, the lowest uh, median values, etc. Okay, uh, so that is a box plot. We can also show the outliers. So if you want to show the outliers, okay. Uh, next, let's look at some visualization for the temporal data. So let's first let's look at the data clock. Uh, so data clock is a uh, is something that is a visualization that allows us to show the temporal patterns. So here again we choose instant as a date and let's choose the rings as a weeks and let's say we want to see the number of the total uh, of the injuries. Okay. The total of the injuries and let's do not see the labels okay and here we can see a pattern that on saturdays and also on sundays we tend to have more injuries okay so most uh, on sundays and also on saturdays we tend to have uh, more injuries and mondays and also wednesdays uh, those are the days that we do not have a lot of injuries okay so that is the clock, uh, date clock, that can help us to show the patterns. Uh, you can, of course, choose the, the, the years, the days, etc. Uh, so that's one way uh, to show the patterns, the temporal. Another way is that we can also use the calendar. Okay, so calendar heat chart. Uh, so here, let's say we want to see, we also incident, and we want to see the 
the total of the injuries as well. Okay, uh, so now we can see that on which days that we have more injuries. So we have one hotspot and also another hotspot. And also for the non-values, you can also choose we don't give a, it a color. Okay, uh, so that might be uh, easier to understand, visualize. Of course, you can always enable this extend so that you can zoom into different locations that you are interested in and to see the um, calendar heat chart. Okay, uh, so that concludes our uh, required parts of this lab that geocoding the data and also explore the data by uh, using different type of the uh, visualizations. And also we also should uh, try to select by locations and also select by attribute. So the next step will be optional so that um, um, it's, it's a very also very cool uh, functionality in ArcGIS Pro that we can also visualize the, the spatial data by creating a video. Okay, so this part is optional. Uh, so let's see how we can do that. So let's close uh, those tables first. And those charts as well. So let's close the charts and the tables. <clears throat> so here we have a map that have those points. Um, and also we have also the temporal information. So the date of each single instant. So we can create a video that is to show um, th uh, those instants. So first, let's change the base map. So let's go to the base map. And let's choose a darker base map. OK, and let's change the symbology. So let's, so let's choose a layer and let's go to the appearance, symbology. And here we are going to use the graduated symbols. Oh, that is also called proportional symbol map. Uh, here we are going to visualize uh, the, uh, the people being killed. So the field will be the people being killed and the classification methods. Uh, so you can choose which one that you like. So we mentioned that when in the lecture, so the natural break is a default one, quantile, equal intervals, um, and also uh, standard deviations. Okay, so here I'm going to use the natural break, which is the default. A number of classes. Uh, so as, as we mentioned that normally we don't have more than five classes. So five is a, is a, the, <laughs> the maximum number. And also the size. So how big we want your size to be. So biggest will be uh, 18 points and the smallest it will be four points, which is fine. And color. So if we click the template, and uh, you can change the template. So here I'm going to choose a circle three. So those will be red. OK. So now we have this map. Um, we will talk more about the map in the map designs uh, lab. So now we have the map, but we want to, the point to be uh, moving so that we can see the, the different instance at different time. So to do that, let's right click this layer and go to the properties and go to the time. So we see that we do have the time and also each feature has a single field time field. And that is an instant time. And let's calculate and say OK. So now the time has been enabled. And you can see this bar. And if we click, and now you can see that now we have a kind of the movie or video that shows that at different time period that where are those, where does those instant occurred. Uh, of course, you can adjust <coughs> the speed, uh, uh, the temporal period, like the start time, end time, uh, and also time intervals, etc. So you can also do that. OK, so we kind of have done this part in the GPS data. So we can create change symbols and also 
we can enable time and also we can visualize those points um, by enable the time. So next, how can we export uh, this search type visualization? So uh, we can do that one in ArcGIS Pro now. So we can export as a video or as a, um, as a GRF uh, image as well. So, so to do that, uh, let's go to view. Again, this part is optional. So um, let's see, add. And here we are going to create our first keyframe. So let's start click, create first keyframe. And next we go to import. So here you can see we can import the time slider steps. So which is this one. So let's import the time slider steps. Okay, and uh, so now if you run uh, this video and you can see that um, the points are changing. Okay, uh, so once you're happy with this one, you can go to this export. Okay, so that is here. Uh, so how, however, before we export this video, so let's see the duration. I want this one to be shorter. So I want this one to be uh, probably 15 seconds. And now if I run it, so that will be faster. Okay. And now I'm happy with this uh, video. So I'm going to say export. So now I'm ready to export the movie. So just click export. Um, and here you can see uh, you can export to different social medias. So that means that the, the output will fit with the uh, different types of social medias. Or you can just export as a high um, HD videos all and, and GRF. So here I'm going to choose the GRF. I'm going to save to my OneDrive Lab 6 folder. Um, I do have the warning that if I have multiple uh, videos that with the same name, that will be overwrite. And you can have the other uh, settings like the the format, the the frame, etc. So those are some advanced settings. And next, we can hit export. Okay, so it will see preparing as a map for export. Uh, so normally it will take um, uh, about uh, six to ten minutes. Uh, so we just to be patient and also wait until that's well finished. So here you can see it will it will need six minutes. Okay. Uh, so this is a very very long lab, and again, uh, creating video part is optional. So I just want to show you that how we can export the. Uh, the videos that when you want to visualize the temporal data, which is pretty cool function in ArcGIS Pro. And uh, we also can geocode data and also visualize the non-spatial data and also interactively with those spatial uh, visualizations. We can also do some selections here. Okay. Okay, uh, so looks like everything to be success. So now, uh, so make sure that you have exported uh, those visualizations that required in the lab. And next, you can just save and also close uh, this project. So this is a very long project uh, lab, uh, but we did cover some very important part uh, um, on this class uh, in this lab, like. So now if we go to our OneDrive folder that in my local computer, so we should be able to see those visualizations we just created. Uh, so for example, the, the JPEG file. Okay, uh, the bar chart um, and also the map GRF. 